Figure we'd start this week off with a little joke I read. Which horseman of the apocalypse has the smelliest trousers? War. War never changes. Welcome back to Apog Gaming. I'm Fallen Frog. Last week I showed you guys Panzoid.com. I introduced you to their clip maker tool and showed you how to make some cool 3D intros for your own channel. That's how I made the Apog Gaming intro you just saw on this channel. To be fair though, I only made the first portion of that intro in Panzoid. Basically all of that Apog Gaming text that flies in. That was done through Panzoid. I had the two lines of text and then I also had a green screen behind it. Just a basic square shape and I colored that green. The next thing I did to make my clip transparent and to add that red swoosh that flies across after Hapog Gaming is on screen, I did have to use After Effects. Now I remember I told you guys last week that I am a huge After Effects noob. And that's still true. I have not learned any new tricks. I do know one though, and that's how to render out a transparent video. So you can actually have a video clip that has no background, and you can bring that into your editing software and put it over other clips. You won't have to go through and chroma key out uh, certain colors or anything like that. If you've ever worked with a transparent image, then you'll be familiar with this. It's the same thing with a video. And that's what I did for the Apog Gaming intro. I basically took that clip and made it transparent in After Effects. It's actually a very simple process, and I'm going to show you guys that right now. So we're coming over here to After Effects. What I have here in my project file right now, I've got basically two files added. Here you can see Converted Panzoid Video. And this is just the Hapog Gaming video that I made in Panzoid.com. I brought that over and then I've imported that into After Effects. In fact, if I double click on it, you can actually see the Panzoid file that I brought over. You can see that the background is green. I used a green screen. That was just basically a square brought onto my stage, uh, expanded so that I could see it in render view. I never animated my camera. I animated the letters. As those come flying in, the green screen just stays there. The camera stays in position. And you can see that right here, in action. Pretty simple. So that's my video from Panzoid. Uh, here we've also got the red swipe. This is just the Hapog red swoosh that's on their logo. We're going to have that red swipe show up on screen and last till the end of the video. Even I know how to do that. So first things first, we're going to create our composition. We're going to bring this video down here make a new composition that is to the specifications of our Panzoid video, which is at 1080p, 30 frames a second, and it lasts for 10 seconds long. So simple enough, we've got a timeline with our video. This is on one layer of our, of our composition. Now that I've got a timeline, I can bring my red swipe down. So we're gonna bring this down here. So to bring that in front, it's really easy. We're just gonna click and drag red swipe up above Panzoid video, right here in the source name. Now we've got our red swoosh right in front of our video if we play through this. Pretty much as expected, the red swipe just stays there in place. We don't want the red swipe to show up until Hapag Gaming, both words are on screen and have stopped moving. That's when the red swipe is going to show up and we'll have it wipe into the screen. So we're just going to move to that point in our timeline here. We've got the text, it comes to a stop. Now I'm just going to come over here to the beginning of this block. If we click on this block here, this is basically our red swipe and this is how long it's going to remain on the timeline. Uh, so I'm just going to drag this over here to our marker. Now if we move it, you can see that the Hapag Gaming text goes by, the letters fly in, and boom, we've got our red swipe. It's not in the place we want it and it doesn't have any animation effect to it, but we'll fix that real quick. As far as getting it into position. Uh, we're just going to move this around on this. We can just click and drag it. So with the red swish selected, I can move this around. Uh, I can also hold shift to move this up and down without moving it left or right. Otherwise, it kind of moves around left or right. But if I hold shift, it'll stay exactly where it was. Now for the white transition, that one's also really easy.
And you'll notice we have an effects panel now, so we can we can uh, start playing around with the settings of this of uh, this linear wipe that we've just added. We're going to go into some basics of animation and After Effects. I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, I'm just really showing you guys how I did this, how I was able to achieve this. This isn't necessarily important to rendering out a transparent video. Uh, this is just going to show you how I applied the wipe to the red swish. If we hit this drop down arrow, we've got our effects and our transform settings. Within our effects, of course, we've got the linear wipe that we just added. There is going to be some animation to our wipe. So we're going to have to hit the stopwatch to enable animation for this uh, transition complete. We want to be able to add a keyframe and have this the transitions not completed and then we want the transition to be completed at another point in our timeline. Uh, I'm just going to move this keyframe real quick. We're going to click and drag it. This way our first keyframe is at the very beginning of where our red swish is on the timeline. So, Alright, so we've got the keyframe at the beginning now. Uh, what we're going to be playing with is transition complete. This is this is what we're going to be animating. You'll notice we start at 0% of the transition completed. This just has our image on the screen. We can click and drag over on this 0% or you can type in whatever you want. Um, we can bring this over to 100%. You know, this means our wipe is completed. Uh, what we want is we want this to actually bring the wipe into the screen instead of taking it away. After I played around with the software for a little bit I was able to discover that was with the wipe angle uh, we can just change this plus 90 to negative 90 so now you'll notice with this changed if we bring our transition complete forward to hundred percent we're actually taking away our red swish so in order to get it to go left to right like I wanted I had to change the angle so here on our first keyframe we're just going to set this to hundred percent this makes it basically appear as if we have no red swish now I'm just going to move forward on the timeline a little bit and we're going to click the add a keyframe button which is right here on the left with this new keyframe we're just going to change our 100 percent to a zero percent and since we have two keyframes uh, it's going to go you know, as this plays along the timeline, it's going to go from the 100% to the 0%. And because we reverse the wipe angle, it actually looks like it's coming in from the left. It does a swoop across the screen until the end of the timeline. That's pretty much it. Now if we play back the clip, let's see how it looks. You know, we've got the word hog going in. I've also got a glitch special effect that was, that was done in Panzoid. Uh, here comes the text. And then boom, our red swoosh. Before I can actually render the clip out transparent, I have to get rid of the green screen itself. So let's just clean up our timeline real quick. I'm going to close this arrow on the red swoosh. I am going to open up the arrow for the Panzoid video. We need to do a chroma key, a color key. We need to get rid of this green color. To do that, we're going to go into the keying effect. It's located right behind my camera. Uh, trust me, it's there, but you're going to click on keying. You're going to click the drop down arrow. It's going to bring up more selections. The one I used was linear color key. You can see I have selected here. When you bring that down, obviously, you know, it opens up a new effects tab. Uh, so you have some different effects that you can play with for this. All we're going to do is pick our key color, which we can use the, you know, you can just use the eyedropper tool. We're going to select this green color. Now that all the green in our video is removed, uh, it's going to be invisible. In order to make it transparent, we have to do one more thing. We're going to go into our export settings. You can go into file, export. We're going to add this to the render queue. We're going to click on lossless to bring up our output module settings. And right here under the video output section, we've got an RGB channel. You just wanna change this to RGB plus alpha. Once you've selected that, just hit okay. You can choose where you wanna output your video to. Just click on the video name here. Choose where you wanna save that. Uh, it renders it out as an AVI file. That file has your transparent background in place. And now here I am in Premiere Pro. I'm just gonna show you what it's like when you bring that clip from After Effects and you bring that into your editing software and you start putting it together with all the clips that you're recording with your HD PBR. So here's the two clips, of course. We've got the Hip Hop Gaming intro. Still looks like it's on a black screen. I assure you it is transparent. It's just our stage, the background happens to be a black screen. Within Premiere Pro, we've got, you know, of course, video and audio. I'm gonna drag my video up one layer. I'm gonna move my audio down one layer as well. Uh, I'm even gonna mute the gameplay here. So we slide, so we're gonna slide our gameplay clip back. We're going to go through our timeline, and if we hit play, you can see we've got our pod gaming text playing over our gameplay footage. Any footage that you wanted to bring in, um, you can have transparent video files. It's that simple. In this video today, I of course spent a little more time showing you guys how I did the rest of the Hip Hop Gaming intro. 
I didn't want you guys to think that you could make something like that just straight out of Panzoid. I certainly didn't, you know. I used Panzoid for what I needed, uh, and then I went over to some other programs, did some more stuff, and then brought it all together so that it's a one clip that I can just reuse. Every time I want to bring it over into Premiere Pro, when it's time to edit, I can just quickly bring that back over. I can throw in different video game footage each time so you guys get a new intro so things are a little different. But it is still the same. I don't have to recreate it each time. I can just quickly drag that Hapog Gaming intro onto the clip, render that out. We're good to go. And that's going to do it for this week. If you guys have any questions or comments, though, you can leave those down below. If you want to see last week's video, you can click right here to do that. Don't forget to subscribe to Hapog Gaming. You can hit that button as well. And if you have any questions for me personally, you can just... You can find me on my social media channels. There'll be some links in the description. I'm Fallen Frog. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.